Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams, and today we're going to look at the Modified Internal Rate of Return, or MIRR, as it relates to capital budgeting decisions. So this Modified Internal Rate of Return makes the assumption that our positive cash flows are reinvested at the firm's cost of capital, and the initial outlay, or that negative cash flow at year zero, is going to be financed at the firm's financing cost. What we know is that the MIRR more accurately reflects the cost and profitability of a project, so it is actually preferred over the internal rate of return approach. The decision criteria for MIRR is pretty straightforward. If the modified internal rate of return is greater than the cost of capital, then we'll accept the project. But if MIRR is less than cost of capital, we reject the project. So we're going to look at this project A with a cost of capital of 11%. And it's a four-year project, and the cash flows are here. So we have a negative 12,000 um, initial outlay or outflow in year zero, and then four positive cash flows. We're going to trick the BA2 Plus into calculating this for us. And so it becomes a two-step process. We're going to find the future value of all of those positive cash flows and sum them up. And then we're going to determine the rate of return that grows that initial outflow plus the future value of the positive cash flows and that is going to be our MIRR. So we're going to use our time value of money keys on our BA2 Plus to do this, but what we have to do first is we need to figure out the N for each of these. So remember when we're looking for the, this future value right, that this cash flow in year one is going to get to grow for three years out to year four. So our N is going to be three. So this cash flow two is going to have one, two, is going to have, sorry, one, two periods to grow. This third cash flow is only going to grow one year to year four. And this cash flow that we get in year four is not going to have any time to grow at all. So when we're using our future value keys, remember we're going to assign an N of 3 here, 2 here, 1 here, and 0 here. Alright, so let's start. So for the first cash flow, I have an N of 3. I have an IY 11%, which was my um, cost of capital. I have a present value of 5830 I have no payment and now I'm going to compute my future value so that first cash flow um, becomes 797329 so now I'm going to come in now remember write that number down and now I'm going to clear my time value of money keys again and for cash flow 2 I have an N of 2 IY of 11 present value 4680 present value no payment compute future value so now I have five thousand seven hundred sixty six dollars and twenty three cents for cash flow two. clear your time value money keys again we're gonna do cash flow three cash flow three has an N of one an IY of eleven a present value of 2020, no payment, compute future value. And so cash flow three has a future value of 224220. Remember that because cash flow four has an N of zero, its future value will simply be $2,500. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these values and I'm going to sum them up. So for cash flow 1, I had 
29, just check your math with mine. For year t for the second cash flow, I had 57, 66, 23. For cash flow 3, I had 22, 42, 20. Remember, cash flow four had no time to grow, so it's simply that $2,500. And I'm simply going to sum all of these. And that gives me a total of $18,481.72. And what that value is, it's the future value of all of these cash flows here. Now, I'm going to use this future value number and my time value money keys to solve for this modified internal rate of return. All right, so here I am at this last step. So remember, I'm going to solve, use that future value to solve for the IY. And so I know my project had a life of four years. I'm going to solve for IY. The present value, this is where we use the negative Cash out, cash outflow in year zero is my present value. We make no payments, and the future value is simply the sum of those future values of those individual cash flows, which we found to be 18,481.72. And now I'm going to compute IY. And so that IY is actually my modified internal rate of return at 11.40%. Because our cost of capital was 11%, we will accept this project because the modified internal rate of return is greater than our cost of capital. So just because we didn't have a BA2 plus professional calculator, we were still able to find this MIRR using what you have. And I hope this helped, and thanks for watching.